Hey everyone, so this week we're going to start using a <clears throat> new software tool which uh, I think one or two of you came to um, Tauti this week and so you uh, may have seen this some of this already. Um, but we're going to use a new tool called OpenRefine. Um, OpenRefine, when you install it on your hard drive, is still going to be referred to as Google Refine because it has not quite made the full transition over to the open source community that has taken it over. Um, but this is the tagline of OpenRefine is a power tool for dealing with messy data. It is an open source uh, free cross-platform data analysis tool um, and one of the things among it does many things uh, more effectively than our spreadsheet programs do. Um, it does different things more effectively than spreadsheet programs do um, but it's really hand, uh, it's really helpful for giving us kind of like a cross cross-section and kind of cross-tabs on our data sets as well as letting us do some some really essential functions for kind of cleaning it up and making sense of it that let, help us analyze it better. Um, so the first step to doing this is going to be of course to install OpenRefine and so you can see I've just done a Google search here and the first thing that comes up is OpenRefine.org um, and it uh, you can just go to the download page right here um, and you can just download what you need uh, your your particular version. Now, one thing I want to highlight here is that um, there is this issue 590. So starting with, I believe it is Mountain Lion, um, either Lion or Mountain Lion on the Mac, um, the operating system becomes skeptical of downloaded applications. And so um, you may need to follow the directions here for uh, if you download Refine, try to install it. And it says something like, the file is corrupted, please move it to the trash. Um, you have to set some permissions. So if you go to System Preferences, Security and Privacy, so anyway, the instructions are here. You should obviously make sure to download and install this and, and, and give it a shot before you come to class next week uh, with Mike. Um, but this is this is how you do it. Um, and so the I have already opened for myself here Google Refine in, um, in a tab. Now, the thing about Google Refine is that it uses the browser window as its user interface. Um, so it doesn't look in some ways, it, it, there are ways in which it doesn't look or operate like a traditional software program precisely because the interaction you are ha having with it is happening through the browser window. Now that said, OpenRefine lives on your hard drive, it deals with data on your hard drive, you are not storing data in the cloud when you work on OpenRefine. This obviously is a strong advantage in some cases because we're not always comfortable with publishing data that we might need to work with. It gives us a chance to do that locally in a really powerful way, um, and it has a lot, it has a lot of really great features. So, for example, um, it you know you see here that our default tab is this create a project, open project, import project. So we're going to start with create a project naturally, um, and it has a very you know sort of typical let me browse to a um, you know let me browse to a folder and open a file. Um, I can also use URLs. So, for example. Um, if I needed to parse, you know, if I wanted to parse data from, say, a Google spreadsheet, whether it was uh, public or non-public, I could do that. Um, if there's just a data URL, like, uh, for example, our Trader Joe's data, uh, that XML, we could just paste the URL of that result into, um, uh, or like a download link, we could actually just paste directly into this um, into this entry bar and it would it would download and parse the data for us. So it's really nice, it can save us a lot of steps. Um, and the other thing to point out here, which is also incredibly remarkable, is the fact that OpenRefine works with um, a lot of what are otherwise kind of nasty documents. So specifically in our first week we were talking about how different data formats are, are uh, better suited to different types of, of tasks, right? And specifically that our tabularly organized files such as TSV, CSV, um, they've used an asterisk in here which stands for any character SV, right? Which, which addresses that thing of like sometimes it's a semicolon, maybe it's a pipe, Motamin. Um, Excel, uh, and then of course we discussed that JSON and XML are really data formats that are better designed for hosting and serving data over the web. Now the fact that Google Refine, uh, OpenRefine, I'm going to mix those up so just bear with me, um, the fact that OpenRefine lets us, provides a mechanism for translating these less, um, less tabular data sets into a tabular form is extremely powerful because you know if we were to go back to um, you know, if we were to look at some JSON data, and now uh, I don't think we'll do this right now, but if we were to look at JSON data or XML data like that Trader Joe's data, um, you know, there's a lot of fields of information in there, but it would be very difficult, for example, to see 
how many of those Trader Joe's were in Brooklyn just by looking at the XML, or how many were in New York State, right? Um, what Open Refine does is provide a facility for sort of translating that very um, hierarchical kind of nested structure that we know exists in JSON and XML into this kind of rows and columns format um, that we're more familiar with in tabular data, and which of course allows us to do even simple data analysis like counts. Right, um, it's really, really important. So, just want to highlight those those lovely, lovely features. Um, and then now we're going to sort of take a step through. We're going to look at we're going to look in the first part, uh, the first couple of videos. Um, we are going to look at our uh, main supermarket CSV file and look at some of the really great uh, features for data analysis that OpenRefine provides um, for cleaning and kind of and, and analyzing data. And then we're going to switch over to a a slightly uh, adjusted data set, also of the supermarket data, um, but a little bit more of the magic of video that we saw last week um, to, to get to some of the other exercises that we want to do with this. So um, to begin, uh, again, typical interface here, I'm going to open up my new supermarket data CSV, click next, and it's going to give me this little, this little preview window, right? So um, we know, because we've already looked at it, that our, uh, that our table is, um, is comma-separated value. And usually OpenRefined is pretty good at guessing what uh, kind of, you know, doing a first run through the file and guessing what the separator is. It turns out it has not done such a great job in this case, right? We can see that the rows are all running together um, into a single cell. Um, and that it doesn't seem to have a sense of the column names here. And um, I can see, uh, if we look down to the lower left here, you can see that there's a whole bunch of ways, sort of default ways, that I can preview in this data file, or in this preview window. Oh, maybe I want it to be fixed with text files, PC access text files, I don't even know what those are, JSON, um, RDFN3, XML, ODS, right? So we know that this is a, a separator-based file. It has guessed incorrectly that it is tab-separated, so we're going to select commas and see that our preview now updates to um, the lovely tabular format to which we are accustomed. Um, and I also want to highlight some things that are happening over here um, on the lower right. Um, so we see some options, so it says parse next one lines as column headers, right? This is reflecting the convention that column headers appear in the first line of a spreadsheet. Um, and we also see this ignore first zero lines, discard initial zero rows, load at most zero rows. So this becomes important when uh, we're dealing with very large data sets, right? So when we try to deal with, for example, the restaurant, uh, the restaurant violations database, it's become an extremely large file over the last few years, and it's very difficult to open and run efficiently, uh, really, in any software program because there's just so much data there. So what's nice about this is that rather than having to kind of step it up a notch and go find a, a more powerful computer or a more powerful program, um, what OpenRefine does is, is it gives us these options so that I could say, the first time I need to open a data file like this, I could say, you know, load at most 50,000 rows of data, right? Save that out as a partial file and then come back and then open the new, you know, open the original file again or start to open the original file again and say, look, discard the initial, the first 50,000 rows of data and then load at most 50,000 rows of data, right? So that I can take a very large data set, break it into pieces and make it more manageable to work with, right? You know, not as handy, of course, as being able to deal with everything at once, but, you know, sometimes that's the reality of it. Um, and again, we also see some other things um, that we re probably remember. Quotation marks are used to enclose cells containing column separators. So that is the equivalent of what we saw the other week um, with uh, the quotation marks around um, the titles in our health codes um, thing. So it's basically saying the text delimiter is a double is a is a quotation mark, um, right? And if you recall, we saw that thing with health codes where one of the name it was a CSV file, but one of the titles actually had a comma in it, and so it was wrapped in quotes, et cetera, et cetera. You can always go back and look at that. So um, I am going to rename uh, my file here, give it a project name, and I'm going to select create project. Okay, so now a couple of other things that I want to point out, uh, things that I find really advantageous about OpenRefine, uh, even as an initial kind of data exploration tool, right, even, even before 
uh, if ever we need to take our data to something like Excel. So Excel, and you know, when I say Excel, I mean spreadsheet programs. Spreadsheet programs are um, really designed for and generally pretty good at doing the kinds of calculations and manipulations that we've been doing over the course of the last week. For example, doing things like finding, you know, averages, standard deviations, um, you know, sort of mathematical representations. Um, what they are much less good at is offering overviews and kind of cross tabs of data. Now, this is not to say that the functions that we see in OpenRefine are not available in other software programs. Um, if you are a pivot table expert, um, you will find that many of the things that we're doing with OpenRefine can be done with pivot tables. Um, the reason why I lead them in OpenRefine is because I don't know how to use pivot tables. And in my experience, um, OpenRefine has uh, a much lower learning curve to get to some of these tasks um, than, say, an a spreadsheet program does. So, you know, what we're trying to do here is optimize our time, get the most bang for our buck, so to speak, in terms of what tool we use for which task. And so when it comes to sort of getting an overview of data, cleaning it up, things like that, we're mostly going to come, we're often going to come to open or fine. Um, so again, a little bit of an unusual uh, interface here, because remember, of course, we are in the browser, which means that I can't really right click. Um, and that's one of the things that, that makes this interface a little bit unusual and you kind of have to adjust to a bit is the fact that when I need to do an operation on a column, I'm always going to select this little drop down uh, menu because the right clicking that I would do, say, on a menu or on a cell in, in spreadsheet program isn't available to me because I'm actually in a browser window. Um, also, you'll notice that it does not show, um, I don't have this idea of wrapping or unwrapping text here, so these are, these are pretty... Uh, spread out these rows and you notice that I can only show up to 50 rows at a time. Um, likewise, uh, even if I have all of those 50 rows showing, um, I don't, I can scroll through the maximum number of rows that I have displayed um, sort of in a typical fashion and I can scroll, you know, left to right as well. Um, but if I want to see, you know, the next 50 rows, then I have to use these next, last, and first previous buttons. So it is, it is a little bit different. It is not for browsing in the typical way. However, I do want to draw your attention to some other features that I think are just fantastic. First and foremost, how many rows of data do I have? Anyone? I have 2,761 rows of data. How do I know that? Because OpenRefine prints it right at the top of the file. Um, this may seem trivial, but actually uh, it can be very tedious if you're opening a large file. Um, to have to scroll all the way to the bottom in a spreadsheet program to know how many cells there are. Um, it's just annoying. Um, plus, we're going to see that this row count feature actually comes back as um, it, it becomes powerful in other ways and useful as, as a shorthand uh, in other ways um, as we get into some more of our, our uh, data analysis activities. So um, realize we didn't do too much here, but just wanted to give you kind of an introduction to the tool, how it works. Um, when we come back in a minute, we will be looking at um, we will be looking at some of the more uh, robust functionality uh, beyond just opening a file. Uh, so we'll see you very shortly.